Hi, I'm still working on um, the derivatives of of uh, inverse functions, and uh, we're going to take a look at how to compute those. And um, so you can look at these as methods of finding the the derivatives, or you can um, memorize the shortcut. And I'll talk about both of those in some examples coming up. But the first one I'm going to take a look at is find the derivative of y equals sine inverse of x. And you're going to see on every single method here, the steps are going to be the same. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write that in terms of the sine. So it's, I have the sine of y equals x. All right, and you kind of saw this on a uh, previous note. So what I'm showing you is steps I'm going to take. So this will always be my first step. And my second step is coming up with this triangle that you saw in previous problems. And sine, here's my angle, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so I can write that as x over 1. So here's x. This is 1. And that means now if I complete this triangle, I can figure out the length of that side. That's going to be 1 minus x squared. All right. So what I do now is I come back in this direction, and I implicitly take this derivative. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So I'm going to write the cosine of y. And the chain says I have to take the derivative of y, which is dy dx. And the derivative of cosine, excuse me, of x is 1. So that means now I have dy dx is equal to 1 over the cosine of y. And over here I look at this. Can I determine the cosine of y? Well, the cosine of y is adjacent, which is this side, over 1 or it's simply the square root of 1 minus x squared. And so dy dx, the derivative of this inverse in terms of x, is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right. I'm going to do the same procedure for each trig inverse. I mean, you should be able to see some type of pattern. So now I have y equals the cosine inverse of x. And so I'm going to rewrite that as the cosine of y is equal to x. And I'm going to say, all right, draw my picture. What does that look like? Well, this is going to be x, and this is going to be 1, and this is going to be 1 minus x squared. I'm going to do implicit differentiation, and I'm going to have negative sine of y times dy dx is equal to 1. So dy dx is equal to 1 over the negative sine of y, which is equal to 1 over, OK, here's my y. I forgot to put that in. What is sine? Well, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, since it's negative, it's going to be negative square root of 1 minus x squared. And if you notice, they look the same, except they're opposite sides. All right, let's see, see if that trend continues. All right, so I've done sine, cosine. I'm going to do tangent. y equals the tangent inverse of x, which means the tangent of y is equal to x. Draw my right triangle. Here's y. Here's my 90 degrees. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so now this is going to be the square root of 1 plus x squared, a squared plus b squared, and the square root of that. So now when I do tangent, I have secant, derivative of tangent is secant squared y times dy dx. Again, I get 1. So dy dx is equal to 1 over secant squared y, which is the same as cosine squared y. So cosine is adjacent over this, and so it's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. That squared 
and I get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Right? Now since I've done tangent, why don't I do cotangent right away? So I have cotangent inverse of x. Well, that's the same as the cotangent of y is equal to x. So now I'm going to draw my triangle. Cotangent, well tangent was opposite over adjacent. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So those two are going to switch, but this is going to be the same. It's going to be 1 plus x squared. All right. So the derivative of cotangent, if you take a look at derivative of cotangent, it is a negative cosecant squared y 1 over 1, which is, oops, I didn't do that correctly, did I? And people are wondering what the heck I did here. All right, times d by dx is equal to 1. Okay, going too fast. And so dy dx is equal to 1 over negative cosecant squared y, which is the same as negative sine squared y. Well, what's sine? It's opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be a negative 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. This is kind of looking similar to up above, except it's a negative 1. It's the opposite. All right, last two. All right, so this one, y is secant inverse of x. That means the secant of y equals x. And I got my right triangle. Secant is a reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So here's x. Here's 1, and I have the square root of x squared minus 1. So I'm going to do implicit differentiation. Derivative of secant is secant y tangent y times dy dx is equal to 1. So dy dx is equal to 1 over secant y, oops, times tangent y. Well, that's going to be 1 over, what's secant y? Secant y is uh, opposite over adjacent. It's x. What's tangent? It is opposite over adjacent. And so it's the square root of x squared minus 1. All right. Now let's take a look at cosecant y equals the cosecant inverse of x means that the cosecant of y equals x. So I have my right triangle. Here is y. And um, Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this is hypotenuse over opposite. So this is going to be the square root of x squared minus 1. Implicit differentiation, its derivative is a negative cosecant y cotangent y dy dx is equal to 1. is equal to a negative 1 over cosecant y cotangent 
y. All right, so what is, I got negative 1 over, what's cosecant? Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite x. What's cotangent? It's uh, adjacent over opposite. The square root of x squared minus 1. Take a look at those. There looks like there is a relationship. So those are how you figure out the derivatives of the inverse trig functions.